Sisterhood. Once upon a time, in a kingdom not so far away, there lived a widowed king with his beautiful young daughter, Princess Anne. The king's heart was lonely, and he decided it was time to marry again. My loyal subjects, I have decided to seek a new queen, and furthermore, Princess Anne needs motherly love. Ahem, you need a queen too. Eventually, joy bloomed, and Queen Valora, a regal but envious woman, arrived at the castle with her daughter Kate. Greetings, dear stepdaughter Anne. And this is my precious Kate. You two might get along. You're about the same age. That night in her private chambers, Queen Valora gazed at a portrait of Anne. Her envy was evident. She's far too beautiful for her own good. Meanwhile, Anne and Kate became fast friends. They laughed, giggled, and ran around the castle gardens playing together. You're the sister I've always wished for, Kate. And you're the friend I treasure most, Anne. I must ensure Anne doesn't outshine my Kate. The next day, Queen Valora ventured into the mystical woods, where she met the enigmatic Henwife at her cottage. Henwife, they say you possess magic. I need your help. Speak your troubles, Queen. Anne's beauty. It outshines my daughter Kate's future. The simple matter to resolve. Send her to me tomorrow at dawn. The next morning, Queen Valora hatched her wicked plan, and Princess Anne innocently accompanied her queen. They arrived at the hen's wife eerie abode. We've come for some fresh eggs, hen wife. Do you have any? Of course, your majesty. If the girl would kindly lift the lid off that pot. As Princess Anne cautiously lifted the pot's lid, a strange thing occurred, and by some bizarre magic, a sheep leapt and sat upon her head. A harrowing transformation occurred. The culprits were Queen Valora and the hen wife's evil magic. Oh no! How did this happen? Help! Help! Oh my! What a tragedy! The queen wept crocodile tears and sobbed like her own daughter fell prey to sinister magic. Poor princess couldn't talk now whenever she tried. Ba ba! Ba ba! Ba? Ba! Ba 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 ba! Oh, Anne! What do we do? Princess Kate wrapped a fine linen cloth around Princess Anne's head. She couldn't see her plight. We can't let you be seen like this. We must seek help. Let's go. Time is of the essence. Princess Kate, determined to cure her sister's strange affliction, grabbed her by the hand and led her to a distant castle. Excuse me, might we find shelter for the night? My sister is quite ill, and we're both terribly tired. I'm afraid that's impossible. Our young prince is also very sick, and it's a mystery. Besides, whoever stays with him at night disappears. I understand how awful that can be, but we truly have nowhere else to go. Please. Very well, but on one condition. You must take care of the ailing prince for the night. If you manage to do so, you can stay, and the king will reward you handsomely. The night went on, but Kate was wide awake, vigilant. Around midnight, the sick prince woke up, got dressed, and left the room. He did not notice Kate. She followed him to see what he was up to. She watched the prince as he walked into a stable, and as he got busy, Kate seized the opportunity and gathered nuts from the trees nearby. 
The prince settled his horse and rode away. Kate nimbly leapt onto the horse undetected. The ailing prince and Kate arrived at a green hill. Open, open, green hill wide. Let the young prince slide inside. A passage in the green hill opened. The prince entered a magnificent, brightly lit hall filled with fairies. Kate sneaked in behind him. Kate watched as the prince danced tirelessly, urged on by the enchanting fairies. At dawn, the prince and Kate hurried back to their horse. You're still here? Indeed. The prince had a good night. I'd be willing to sit up with him again, but this time I'll need a pack of gold. Whatever it takes, just do what you're doing and look after him. Kate and the prince continued their nocturnal journey to the enchanted green hill, but this time Kate hatched a plan. Once again, they reached the green hill where the fairies beckoned the prince to dance the night away. Kate eavesdropped on a conversation. Three strokes of that wand, and it can overturn the wretchedest of curses. Works particularly well against magic. Kate then rolled nuts to distract the fairy baby, then swiftly grabs the wand and hides it in her apron. The prince and Kate return home. You're here again? Yes, another good night. With the magical wand in her possession, Kate wasted no time. She removed the linen covering her sister's sheep head and gently touched her three times. On myself again. Oh, Kate, it's good to be able to talk again. I missed you. And you're more beautiful than ever, dear sister. Welcome back. I missed you more. The princess is cured, and she's glowing. And the prince is still unwell. This girl is a miracle worker. Dear girl, would you be so kind to stay the third night with the ailing prince? Kate readily agrees, but she has a condition. I will, but if I stay another night and all goes well, I'd like to betroth the prince. Dear girl, I shall put in a word for you. You stay another night, and I'll speak to the king. On the third night, at the Green Hill, Kate overheard the fairies, who discussed another secret, magical barley soup that could cure the sick prince's ailment. Do you know? Three sips of that magical barley soup can heal any hypnotic trance completely. Kate rolled a few nuts she had gathered to the fairy baby, who left the barley basket behind and chased after them. Then Kate stealthily reached into the basket and flicked a handful of barley into her apron. The ailing prince and Kate rode back to the castle slightly early that morning. Instead of cracking her nuts as she had done before this time, Kate boiled the magical barley and made a pot of barley soup. Soon the room was filled with a savory scent. The ailing prince at once spoke up from his bed. Oh, that smells delicious. I wish I had a bowl of that barley soup. Here, just a spoonful, my prince. The prince eagerly takes the first spoonful. Mmm, oh, that's yummy. If only another sip. <laughs> One more, please. I, I feel better. Much better. The prince was healed and regained his strength all thanks to Kate's miraculous barley soup. Then the prince dressed himself and sat down by the fire next to Kate. When the castle helps came into the prince's room, I told you the soup would work wonders. Ha <laughs> ha Indeed you did. I owe you everything. The prince's brother met Anne, and sparks flew instantly. I must say, you're the loveliest girl I've ever met. You're not so bad yourself. Love blossomed between Anne and the princess's brother. <laughs> well, I suppose we should have a double wedding then. Yes, it's only fitting. 
both couples got married at the royal altar. Kate is rewarded as promised in gold coins and in love, and they all lived happily ever after.